Hey everybody, Bam Collectibles here, back for another statue unboxing review for you. My favorite season in all of Naruto has to be the Pain Invasion arc. The statues we're going to be looking at today are two statues out of a group that you'll see here that are going to be made of all the paths of pain. The statues are made by IM Studio, and I have to admit they've been out for quite a few months, and I was skeptical that the studio would make all the paths, and actually they're on their last two that they need to be making, so I, I wanted to get in on this before they rose in price because of how awesome they're going to be when they're all together. All statues are going to be made on that more natural looking base that doesn't have a round circular plate to it. If we look on the bottom, we will see the studio's logo. Taking a closer look, we'll see there is what looks to be moss, and they used a lot of different gloss all over the base of it to where it looks wet. So I'm not sure if this is supposed to be him in the Hidden Rain Village or if it's just him inside of the cave, but that's kind of the natural look that they went for with it being more moisty looking. Note to self, never use the word moisty looking to define a statue again. Pain or Nagato or Nagato using Yahiko's body, whatever you want to refer to it, is one of my favorite antagonists in the show. Next is Zabaza, of course, because of his ability it was so mysterious and I loved how we got to go through the journey of learning about how it works and unfortunately we had to lose somebody because of that process, but it was just an incredible journey and that'll always be one of my favorite seasons. Each one of the legs for his mechanical device is numbered so you know which one does go where. It's also nice that they made all these notches that key into the statue different shapes so that helps you as well to know where to install it. Here is the central part that holds not only all the pieces together for this statue, but also for the device himself. Now, if anybody knows in the comment section below, what is the name of this device? For some reason, I, I don't recall what it is, but all I remember is it does remind me of a spider. One of the things that I always wanted to know is, did he actually use this to walk around? Is this how he traveled places or was it moved mobily? Like, how did he actually lug this thing around from place to place to ensure that he could execute his jutsu and abilities the way that he did? This large notch right here has a big old fat magnet inside of it, and that helps it to connect to the back of that main hub there. Now, we'll see three different holes on each side, the left and the right. Later on, there's going to be some uh, wires or plugs that go in and from outside of that. And those looks like giant bolts that uh, make it realistically look like it attaches to that main unit. And with this piece attached, we'll go ahead and get the rest of the six legs installed onto the main unit. In the series Naruto, we initially follow Sasuke, Naruto, and Sakura. And you know, if there's three people, or I guess honestly six people that I wish we could see more of their journey, it would be uh, Nagato, Yahiko, Conan. And I would also love to see, you know, Jiraiya, Uruchimaru, Tsunade. Those are the kind of six people that I wish we could almost get to see, you know, 100, 150, 200 episodes of their life, their journey, things they went through, uh, their progression as they grew. Not likely something we'll see, but you know, a man can dream, can he? What we're looking at here is the part of the device where Nagato sticks his hands into. And again, I'm not really sure what they do or their purpose, uh, but I do remember that from the show. And so it is accurately sculpted into the statue. The paint application on these look fantastic. It looks like brushed steel and you have those magnets that will allow it to attach to the main center of the base. One of the last larger pieces for this is going to be this large hunk of wood that we'll see attached to the front of it. And if we get close up to it, the paint texturing on this and the way that they honestly sculpted it, it looks like real wood. That is how it connects itself to the base. But you can see here, looks like somebody hand carved that out of wood, but nope, nope, it is made of resin. Like I mentioned in the beginning, today we're going to be showcasing two of the Paths of Pain, and then we're going to be having another four that I've ordered, and one that just went up for pre-order, and so I look forward to them all coming together slowly. These pieces right here are not made of resin. They are just wire, to my knowledge. It, they're very flexible. You can bend them as you need to. We have three different lengths. One super long, which goes on the far left, uh, medium size in the center, and the shorter one uh, closer to the inside. There's really no direct way to connect them to the part where his arm goes in there, but I just rest it in between the grooves as you see here, and that's how it looks natural to me. 
One of the most enjoyable parts of this statue unboxing and owning the statue is the fact that it brings to life more this device that Nagato used. You really never got that in the show, so we really get to see closely how this thing worked and what it looked like. Speaking of what the statue looked like, man, it is so strange to see him in person sculpted like this. It is incredible how sickly he looks and how much he sacrifices to obtain the power that he does in the show. The purple metallic paint app on the bottom there looks really cool. And uh, there's the bottom notch where he connects to the base. Very strong magnet there. And if we flip this around to the back, this is where it gets, uh, gosh, it looks so gross to see, you know, without all the rods in there. But honestly, once we get all the rods in there, it's going to look even more gross. But all those holes that house those rods that are stuck in his back, I believe they're called the, the chakra rods or the transmitter rods. The head was sculpted separately, and there's no secure way to attach it to the body. That's why I removed it when I was first showcasing that. There's no magnet in there, but they did a fantastic job with that. The hair shading looks great. His eyes and the color of his skin tone just all around looks spot on. And here we have all those chakra rods. That go. All right. Take two. So we have all of the chakra rods here. They are of different sizes. You have really long ones. You have some short ones. And I love that they did offer a different range in that. So you have the main rod that's coming out there. And towards the bottom, you'll see a silver. And it comes to a point that allows you to stick it into the holes inside the back. Now, the holes are all different sizes. So you really have to play around to get it right which one goes where. Now, I'm not the kind of person that enjoys scary movies or anything gory or gross. And so this kind of stuff always weirds me out to do this. It reminded me of the same way I had to do for the Zabaza death scene statue where I had to stick all the swords in his back and, and the side of his arm. It was just different, weird to do, but you know, I, I gotta put the statue together. And with all those in, you can see how crazy that looks when I spin this back around from side to side. It's just incredible to bring this from a 2D, you know, art television show into a 3D environment where you can see this right in front of your face. Not that it's something we all already don't know, but it makes so much sense, you know, why his character's name was Pain on so many different levels, including the pain he has to endure to execute the jutsu that he does. With all that together, you can see how incredible this looks assembled. I'm looking forward to it because he is going to be the centerpiece of all the paths of pain when they finally assemble and come together. And they did such a good job with it being and feeling like a centerpiece. Here we have the base for the Diva path. Now this path, honestly, it, when you say the word pain, you think of this one, right? This is Yahiko's body and the main one that kind of controls the gravitational pull aspects of the Rinnegan. The holes there on the base is where an effect piece will be attached in just a moment. We'll see two little patches of grass, the nice rocky rubble, and almost like he just used Almighty Push or he's sprinting off the ground. It's causing a huge effect below his feet. Now, your guess is better than mine on what exactly these effect pieces are. Once we put everything together, I imagine these being just a showcase of the force that's being used as he's sprinting away. I'm not sure, you know, again, what exactly they were going for here. I imagine more smoke or dust clouds would have been appropriate, but this is the effect we have. And so you'll see how it's assembled here now. All right, and there you have it. It's uh, very unimpressive to see. It's kind of boring, and I'm not sure why they decided to go with this, but I think the all-around theme of this is going to be that the Deva path is not the path of focus as everything comes together, so they didn't want to put too much attention and detail to his base. The head and right arm was sculpted separately, so I'm going to remove those and take a look at them later. You'll see he is in a very nice sprinting pose, and the cloak itself is very good. You'll see all the details going from everything from the toenails to the top of his head is immaculate, perfect paint job. What was interesting here is the texturing of the cape is very smooth, and then inside of there, it's like a metallic red. Uh, it's not something I normally see. Usually it's a dull red, but it's metallic. I actually liked it, though. I thought it looked really good how it went with the statue. You know, I'll say it again, and I've said it in other Akatsuki videos before. I, I can never imagine them actually painting their fingernails and toenails. Like, at one point, they had to have sat down and painted them together. Like, that is just not something I imagine any of them doing. All right, so we see here on the right arm, we have uh, some of the rods that are poking out. We have this main rod. It almost looks like a baton, like he's a baton runner on this one, but uh, that's the pose that they chose. 
Definitely a good focus on attention. You can even see the symbol there on the ring. And if we jump over to the head sculpt, I think they did a fantastic job with that, just capturing the likeness of Yahiko's face. The only thing I'll say, which it could just be me, is I think the eyes are a little off. Maybe they're just too oval shaped and they need to be a little bit more round. But also they weren't painted with a layer of gloss over them. So it takes away from the realism of an eyeball. So again, a very small complaint, very minor. I think overall it looks good. But here's how everything connects. Again, there's no magnets. It's just friction that holds it into place. But there is a magnet in the arm. I'm not sure why they didn't put one on the head. Uh, but it just rests in there and sits securely. As I said before, for this specific Deva Path of Pain, there is a high expectation. You know, I think everybody on the channel who's familiar with me is aware one of my favorite statues of all time is the Surge Studio Planetary Devastation, and that's epic. So I'm just glad I have something that represents that, and this is more of an accenting character as we're gathering together all the paths of pain. I want to take a moment to thank all of my members on the channel who support me on a monthly basis. I am so thankful. Let me tell you, this month, oh my gosh, I secured some amazing voice actors that are going to be appearing on the channel in the near future. And it wouldn't be possible without extra funds like this to go into it. So thank you so much for your support. Very, very much appreciated. Now, the addition size for these statues was captured on these steel plates that you see here. And that was Nagato's face on the front. And back here, we'll see there was only 298 made. I don't, I don't know why they didn't just make 300. Uh, that's kind of odd, but 298 made. And here we go. We have Nagato's eye. And on the back there, we'll see the symbol for I am. And then we have one more piece that will showcase the addition size. And you'll see this one is going to be 300. So, again, I don't know why they made 298 for the other, 300 for the other. Uh, but, hey, I'm not the studio. Well, that about wraps up the showcase. I, I'm so curious to hear. Are you excited to see the rest of the Pass of Pain as we assemble them together? And, and if you enjoy this kind of content, statue unboxing, showcasing, reliving the awesome memories of Naruto and other series and franchises, I want to encourage you to subscribe to the channel. And most importantly, hit the notification bell so you do not miss any uploads as I put them up there. As I upload this video, we are nearing 90K subscribers, road to 100K. I cannot believe it. I'm so thankful for everybody who is joining along on this journey and look forward to sharing the rest of these awesome collectibles with you. As always, do what you love and love what you do. Bam out.